So here's all the theories we're, we're working with today. So some of these we're going to be learning today and some of these we're just ranking because I already know them, but I'll try to explain them, I guess. I know a little bit about the second intro voice is Kara theory. And I think it mainly comes from, if I can remember correctly, it comes from the the Japanese translation of it. Cause they're like only one other person in Undertale in Deltarune, I think of mine, like, wrote sentences like this in this particular way of writing in Japanese. I don't remember the if there's, like, a, any, like, English written proof of they're, like, similar to Kara, but I, I do think that's interesting. Whether or not I believe Kara has something to do with this, I don't know. So, like, I would say, like, this one's probably, right away, I'll give it an A tier. I mean, right here, these ones I are, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. I haven't, like, Deltarune is an Undertale prequel. Deltarune is an AU to Undertale. Honestly, this one... S tier, because that's just canon, I think. Oh yeah, uh, this, especially this one, it's a different world that might even have different rules. I mean, a lot of people hang on to that doesn't mean there will be no connections though. For me personally, that just means like, the, the, the Undertow characters are in Deltarune. That's the fucking connection. Like, yeah, literally right here. Deltarune's world is a different one with a different characters that live different lives. A whole new story will happen. I don't know what you call this kind of game, it's just a game you play after you complete Undertale if you want to, that's all. These could be red herring from Toby Fox to, to meant to deceive you, but right now I'm just gonna take it as is. I give it gave this one a D tier. I just don't see it. Okay, I still don't know what the fuck the foreshadows foreshadows is. <sighs> what are we talking about anymore? Dog, I was with you at the beginning and now I'm lost. <laughs> Bro, that just means he's gay. Is he say that 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 fucking papyrus is the knight because there was a joke about him being in his closet. So what I understood from that is that it just foreshadows character secrets. I have to give the okay a C. I have to give it a C. It's like it started off so strong, being like the shadows represent characters. Like I saw Birdly, I saw Susie. Those I was like, okay, that Loki makes sense. I'm kind of vibing with it. And then I felt like it just kept going downhill. <laughs> Here it is, Brawl Say equals evil, F tier. F tier. I do not think that Brawl Say is evil and I will die on that hill. Okay, Noelle created Spamton. Okay, just because that's right there, uh, S tier. Because I feel like, I don't know when this was created to create that theory, but just with the, all the evidence we saw during the the, the the giveaways, I definitely agree with the Noelle created Spamton thing. I think it's a silly theory. Whether it means anything, I don't know, but I definitely agree with it. Noel uh, attack darkness at the start. Honestly, I only only slightly saw the Noel attack, attack darkness at the start, but I kind of already want to put it in the S tier because it makes sense. Wait, <laughs> why is that there? There we go. <laughs> okay, apparently this is a whole thing about who the knight is. Wait, it talks about everybody? What the fuck? I'm gonna be so real. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just biased. Maybe maybe I need to get rid of my uh, my assumptions in my in my head. I don't care what evidence they end up giving me. I will be fucking shocked if they're like, yeah, here's this random ass old man preacher who's actually like the most important character to all of this. <laughs> okay, who else? Okay, so people think that Des is the knight. Do we explain this here? At <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is really funny to me. Being like, she, yeah, she bought a weapon, which was fucking smacking Chris with a wiffle ball bat. D tier. I'd rather agree with the theories that, like, she somehow disappeared into a dark world. D tier, not simply because, like, I feel like there's a small chance that maybe, maybe I could see Toby Fox somehow making it work if he so chose to. The annoying dog ah. has a shocking amount of evidence. How? Which makes him the only S tier option in this video. Look at King Crimson. Is the king under the mountain, Asgore. Starting. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's just it. You know what? I agree. I agree. Get up there. Get up there. Right next to Sans is next. The annoying dog is just Toby Fox, and Toby Fox did create Deltarune, so technically, <laughs> he technically is the knight in a way. <laughs> Right now, I'm a Chris is the Night Believer because I feel like that's the most obvious one so far. Could it be a red herring? Yeah, 100%. But right now, we've seen Chris literally open what we what seems to be open a dark world literally on screen. Because like, I, we're made to believe that, so I'm gonna believe it until like I'm told otherwise, but. 
Right now, I have to put knight equals Chris into... Weirdly enough, A tier. I think it right now, it's the most correct. Because that's what we've been shown. That's what we're being led to believe. But it's the fact that we're being led to believe that so early on. That is what makes it just slightly questionable of, like, if that's end up going to be the truth in the very end. Also, be the biggest F you to make it all D&D &D in the end. And that, something like that is similar to, like, and then I woke up, and it was all the dream, you know? I'd say right away, I'll probably put that. I don't even want to know the explanation for that. But definitely F tier, because that would just be the biggest cop-out ever. The, uh, there's no way um, he's the knight. That would just be too fucking obvious for it to be revealed, which is essentially in the middle of the beginning of the story. And honestly, that's valid. That's kind of like why it's an A, because I'm like, I 100% I agree that it could just be a red herring. That it could be, like, revealing it to, like, making you believe that Chris is the knight because it's going to be used for a twist later on. Like, that is so understandable. I just believe it right now because it's all that we know. So I'm like, maybe Toby Fox can write in a way that we know that Chris is the knight this whole way, the whole time. And like, because for me, it still works. Cause like, we're controlling Chris. We don't know why, why Chris would be opening these if Chris is the knight. So I feel like there's still potential for story building, despite learning it so early on, you know? I think Chris is the knight. But I agree that Chris could end up not being the knight. I just don't know who would make the most sense. Because I feel like so many of the theories we have of who is the knight so far are just so stretch. I mean, I don't know if it's on here, but there is also like a theory that there are multiple knights. Which that one I could probably also put kind of high. Because I can also see that. The idea that there are actually multiple knights and Chris is just one of them, you know? I didn't even do my disclaimer. I didn't even do my disclaimer at the beginning where I fucking hate Gaster theories. I hate most of them. I think that Undertale slash Deltarune fan hangs on too hard to Gaster. Use him for every theory. And then because he's used for every theory, he they, he's used in even more theories as proof, even though he's not actually proven. It was just a theory in the first place. And so it's just like, ah. Uh, yeah, I don't mean that, like, some Gaster theories I can rock with. Like, I also, I agree that Gaster does have some existence of, like, he exists in Deltarune. I'm not gonna deny that. I'm not gonna deny his existence. I'm not gonna say that he, like, doesn't have some sort of purpose in Deltarune, but so much people, so many people I think make him way more important than I think he should be. Okay, before I get some night theories in, I'm seeing this theory. Deltarune is an Undertale genocide sequel. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not even gonna watch this video. I'm gonna put it right next to Deltarune is an Undertale prequel because I don't think it's a prequel or a sequel, no matter what. Knight equals mayor. I don't know if this one has the evidence for a uh, mayor, but I'm gonna be real. Uh, that'll go right next to Des. <laughs> okay. Is that the Pyrus one? I was like, a lot of people think it's him. For the onion. We'll see. We'll see. Chris has never left his house as far as we know. So I like how this is pretty much them being like, I don't agree with this shit. <laughs> okay, I mean, like, right away, even though, like, that was pretty much them explaining, like, why they didn't think it was Papyrus. I don't think it's right for the Marvettes. Yeah, I can imagine there's more. Um, Again, I think just straight away, no matter the evidence, that goes into F tier for me. Simply, again, because I just truly believe that, like, for Deltarune, making any Undertale character super duper very important to Dark World stuff, I, I wouldn't like. So no matter the evidence, no matter who believe like, how well it is, I just truly just don't- I would not like it. Can Knight equals Ralsei? I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this one either. Maybe Ralsei was so lonely to be both the antagonist and the hero. Wait, that's kind of funny. I feel like there's probably someone who like genuinely argues that. F tier. Possibly, I mean, possibly D tier just for the funny idea of like, he was so lonely, had to be both antagonist and the hero. Rules, I probably will not. Sometimes I'm like, sometimes theorists will take jokes. They're purposely made to be jokes too far and turn them into theories. Like that theory earlier about papyrus in like the closet comment that's just clearly a joke and they're taking it too far so part of me is like is this meant to be meta or is this meant to just be a joke that he like knows that he's being cut off Tell me. oh rk also means roaring night shut the fuck up 
Are they going to be, like, saying, like, about how they joke about how, like, Rules Card is, like, his quote-unquote, like, other dad or some way? Yeah, his lesser dad. That just means that they're, they are gay. That's a better theory, that they're just gay lovers. See, I was reading your chat to boot where it's, like, I can agree that Rules will probably be, like, somewhat important to the plot, but not the knight. I don't think he's the knight. I feel like he'd be the type to find out who the knight is and then be, like, I stand with you. Like, I feel like he'd help bring, like, the roaring or whatever, but he isn't the cause of the Dark World's opening. For me, it's like, I don't get how any Dark World person could be the knight. That just doesn't make sense to me. The F tier. Knight equals vessel. I, it, it would be kind of fun, though, like, your, yeah, your discarded vessel. C tier. Not because I believe it's true. But because I just kind of like the storytelling of that theory, Loki. What was the whole Toriel's homophobic one again? Oh yeah, that's you. Were, I remember you brought it up. The theory that fucking Asgore cheated on her with a Rooney. That's so funny. But Toriel would not be homophobic about it. She'd be like, I don't even care that you're gay. I care that you're like a fucking asshole and cheated on me. <laughs> They're calling that homophobic. I just didn't want them to kiss in front of the kid! I'm gonna cry! That's so funny! I can't do that. I can't. Okay. Just to fill it up, this will go into B tier. B for bitch, what the fuck were you talking about the entire time? Toriel is not homophobic, but you made me laugh, so. Yeah, B for bullshit. <laughs> okay, Susie has a bad home life. Um, S tier theory simply because for me it's practically canon and very implied. That's the theory. <laughs> the theory that Chris isn't making a dark world jump to do, they just are creating a gas leak in the house. That's kind of fucking funny. That. <laughs> that's, that's S plus tier, baby. <laughs> I too just casually create a gas leak in the house when I have my friend sleeping over. I guess T theory. Weirdly enough, like. Boo explained to me tea theory. Uh, we talked about tea theory uh, on one of my streams before, and actually, it's not that horrible of a theory. Uh, how do I explain this theory to people who don't know it? Uh, tea theory is pretty much just like in, in chapter two, you get different tea, you get like Chris tea, Noel tea, and stuff like that as an item, and then you go and you can, in when people use like this item to heal, the they get a different amount of HP back, and I think the theory is the amount of HP you get back. If I remember correctly, is um the relationship between the characters and how they like feel about each other. Honestly, you know what you're right. I might actually put that in S tier. I do like this theory. What is the Woody theory? That's what I was looking at. Are we talking about like Woody like Toy Story? Oh, okay, it's this person who's Woody theory is basically a theory that the chapter three secret boss would be a parody of a Woody from Toy Story. Since a newsletter newsletter implies that a cowboy TV show got cancelled and Toby Foxman posted weird distorted versions of Friend and Me on Tumblr, which is foreshadowing for chapter three. Uh, I don't know, fucking up there and B. Only because like I think we could get a cowboy secret boss, probably. I don't know. I don't necessarily know if he would be the like I kinda agree with this, like I don't know if he'd be the secret boss. What are you- Holy- Woody from Toy Story's The Night? Oh shit. Oh fuck. I see this. I see this one. Uh... <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I D. For my own well-being. I cannot- I, I cannot say that Gaster is central. It's the word there. Central to the plot? I do think that he is related to the hidden bosses. I think that's where he lies within mainly in the plot. But I just truly do not think that he is central to the main plot. I know how many people will disagree in the Deltarune fandom. That's fine. <sighs> this one I could probably put higher in C. Simply because, like, I can understand some of the proof that people have that, like, Gaster's important. Do I really agree with it? No. But I like it better than him being central to the plot. Chris summoned the player. Why is this just a comic dub for the evidence? <laughs> Incorrect. He's not speaking in wingdings. He's not speaking in wingdings. Incorrect. False. Wrong. 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 
Is that just like the proof they have that they think like they did like a ritual with Caddy and then that summoned the player into like Chris's body? Like, I'll be fair, I don't know why our soul exists in Chris and why we're controlling Chris. So I get trying to find answers for that. I can kind of see where people are coming from being like, maybe they did a ritual for this dialogue. But it's like, I don't know. Maybe another C tier of like, do I agree necessarily agree with it? I don't think so. But I kind of see where people are coming at trying to like understand why we're possessing Chris. F for this one confuses me and I don't like that. I love the seven deadly sins theory. We don't know what the fuck the other bosses are going to be like. Any more info on this? Because I mean, I would imagine like what, like Spamton is being greed. What would Jevil be? I mean, we don't even know if there's going to be seven bosses. That's like a thing. Pride? Maybe. It's like, okay, I like the idea of it. I can throw this into like a good C tier. Because I like the idea of it, but I just feel like we don't have enough information to confirm that. Toriel kills Undyne. What are we talking about? Huh? Right, the Toriel kills Undyne is pretty simple. Basically the idea that Toriel and Undyne will be sucked into the world chapter 3 and will- and we will trick Toriel to kill Undyne. That fucking sucks. <laughs> Mainly they'll be able to trick Toriel into burning darkers by playing her on her protectiveness. Getting her to see everyone as a threat to her child and reacting to- That's not a theory, that's a fucking fan fiction. <laughs> No, that's- that's just Toriel's homophobic part two. All I see is that chapter three secret, secret boss is Flowey. I don't need to look any more into that and it's going into F tier. That- why the fuck would it be Flowey? I'm assuming Dark World and Church just means that there will be a Dark World in the church. I'll give that a nice A tier. Yeah. Yeah, it totally could be. Darkness are objects brought to life. I can rock with this being being B tier. Technically, I feel like rather than being like objects brought to life, I think rather that like when they come to the light world, they are transformed into these objects. They clearly represent some things in the real world, but I don't know if it necessarily means they're brought to life. I like how we just left naked Ralsei. Hello, what the fuck is the naked Ralsei theory? Naked Ralsei theory, the idea that Ralsei will take off another piece of clothing each chapter. So he'll just be like naked by the end of it. Is <laughs> Naked Ralsei theory, obviously S plus tier. Ralsei is a girl, unless Ralsei is closeted or lying to us. This is not true at all, this person says. Hey, I'll be the judge of that. Why is this an 11 minute long video debating Ralsei's gender? Jesus thinks he had it bad. I'm the one who's about to get crucified, but it's one Bro's of you. Bro's calling himself true. Jesus fact, sure for talking about the theory that Ralsei is a girl. I don't think I like this person. I was gonna joke and put it in the S plus tier because it's funny, but it gets a fucking F tier because that guy's annoying as shit. <laughs> okay, I feel like some of these are like self-explanatory, like the Ralsei equals red horns headband, like the his horns are just a headband? No, he is the headband. Oh, oh, wait, wait, no, I know what you mean, no, I know what you mean. I think now that you say it, I remember hearing about it, about like what item Ralsei is. And like the, the that's like the the yeah Chris wears a headband with the horns yeah and that's trying to say that that's the item that Ralsei is in the real world. I'll put that one on B. Ralsei cares about the player, not by Chris. I don't know what their exact theory is, but I know that there are theories that that Ralsei knows about the player because they purposely get Chris like off camera away from the player, like in chapter two when 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 he's like. Well, let's think about how Susie and Noel are doing. And then Ralsei clearly talks to something about Chris, but we don't know what it is. And some people think that's like purposeful. I don't think that's what this is about specifically, but I don't think Ralsei doesn't care about Chris. I don't know if it's just like the way like the, 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 the theory is like the worded here. I don't know if I would say that like Ralsei does not care about Chris at all. I think Ralsei, like if anything, maybe Ralsei knows we exist as a player knows that we're like possessing Chris, is aware of it, and wants to separate us. It, it just doesn't really like feel like that it's like Chris does not care. I mean, that Ralsei does not care about Chris at all. I feel like that's not true. Cares about the player, maybe, but like doesn't care about Chris. I don't think that's true. C tier, I think. All right. Do okay. you, are you gonna explain the Alvin theory? Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> right before we go into the, uh, uh... Alvin theory. First, the chapter secret boss thing, Flowey, is not as dumb. <laughs> okay, so so we know, you know, chapter three, unless you believe in gas leak, is going to be you know, <laughs> in, the first, in the first floor of the house, correct? Yeah. 
So uh, obviously the the darkeners are going to be inspired by the items in the room, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there are already <laughs> discarded flowers from Asgore in the trash in the room. Oh my and god. Some people, and some people believe the boss of chapter 3, the secret boss, is going to be based off of those flowers and based on flowery. It's not literally flowery, but it's inspired by flowery. No, I... So yeah. No. So basic, uh-uh. That, that would still be an F tier. Okay, okay. Now for the Alvin is the night. Can, can you like get up like a Google Doc or something? We need to write this down. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. So let's see. Let's agree some ground rules. The night has to like qualify for one is they have to have a motive. They have to have a motive. <laughs> this is super... Okay. And specifically, when it comes to their motives, they have to be m- a motive for two different scenarios. Uh, based off of Rouse and what they say, they call him the Roaring Knight. So at least Rouse believes that the knight knows of the Roaring okay. and they're trying to cause it. Or, like Birdly, when he tries to make a fountain, you don't need to know of the Roaring to make a fountain. So the second scenario is that they don't know of the Roaring. They have to have be able to both have access to the library lo- the lab. And the unused classroom. Can we agree that it's not a darkener? So it has to be a lightener. It's Can we agree not a darkener. Yes, I agree. I believe it's not a darkener. Okay. okay. So now let's look at Alvin, the <laughs> creature. Okay. So for motives, they have a motive for both scenarios. Okay. For, when Rousey's talking about the process of prophecy, it has the heroes banishing the angels heaven in the end. And the religion of Deltarune worships a angel and like just the angel as a single being for (laughs) alvin so if they know of the roaring alvin is obviously a preacher they believe in the religion so they would have a reason to bring about the roaring because it brings about the angel's heaven okay and obviously if you pray to the angel you probably think that good their motive too if they don't know of the roaring (laughs) is per that Alvin talks about his father, Gersten, a good deal. It mm-hmm. mentions about how later in life he retired from being a smith and became a fancy writer and inspired people with his creativities and stories. Now, if they don't know about the Roaring, but can create these dark worlds, they, obviously people can go into them and close them. Well, lighteners can. Mm-hmm. Darkeners are obviously in the world. So he could, if he doesn't know about the Roaring, doesn't know anything bad's going to happen, he could theoretically be making these to try to imitate his father in some way, making fantasy worlds, quote unquote, because they're, you know, based off of the reality of the light world, correct? So it could be that, you know, he doesn't know about the roaring and is just trying to, well, make fantasy, quote unquote, you know, that people can experience, become better people. You know, Susie went from a bully to a nice person. In terms of access, the lab library, simple, you know, yeah. public library, you can easily go into there. Now for the unused classroom. In the unused classroom, there's a picture signed by Alvin with him and Torio in the unused uh, classroom. So why would you why would you add that detail unless it has some use or some importance? I'm not saying this is like 100% proof. What I'm saying is yeah. it proves that Alvin could have access to that classroom. Okay. Via Torio. Okay. And he mentions using his father Hammer uh, in when you can overhear him when going to the graveyard in chapter two and questioning his use of it. I can try to find a line of dialogue, but you overhear him saying something like, would father want me to do this and with this hammer, dot, dot, dot. Oh. I guess there's also original character. It's not, you know, it's not Sam uh-huh. or something. Yeah. If you want to add qualifier, it has to be original. Mm-hmm. You do unironically make a better point than the person in the video. Do I really think he's going to be the knight? No. But is for it your... a bad theory, though? Is it a bad theory? For your explanation, I'll give you a C. Higher than the other knight theories. Okay. What, what's your flaws? What are your flaws in the theory? I don't care about Alvin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just more like... It seems so crazy to me that they bring in this character that, like people will just forget exists and have him be like the like so important well, to be fair 
center. You know, it's not like they're gonna put the knight front and center. It's a mystery. I mean, yeah, true. And it's not but like, like... He's, you know, like it's not like he's hidden away. He stands right in front of the church in the light world. Yeah, but like, I think it's just a personal thing where it's like, for me, it would like. I think Toby Fox is better than that. Like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why are you saying it like I personally offended you? <laughs> like, I could so be wrong, but... But uh, uh, I made sense at least. I wasn't like crazy. Yeah. No. Okay. It wasn't as bad as some of the theories, but... Okay, so what's some other ones you don't know that I can um, possibly claim? I mean, Angel equals player. The basic idea is that going back to Ralsei's description of the prophecy, uh -huh. the end of you know, the end of the prophecy as the three heroes banish the angels' heaven. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people connect that to the soul that we control and the mm -hmm. game ending with it being banished. And the angel, and if the soul is what's being banished with the angels' heaven, and that is our connection, therefore the angel is us, the player. How about another C tier, Loki? It's just like, bad theory? No. But like, I feel like us being the angel is a little too much of a stretch. Maybe us being banished, yeah, but like the angel, I don't know about that. Yeah, Asgore had a hand in Dessa's disappearance. I'm not saying I, he's I, a I, child murderer in Delta. I think you'll imply that it's because, because you know, Undertale character is Undertale character. Yourself, who in the um, Asgore killed Dess, which is why Toriel divorced him. It wouldn't be the chief. Just like how Asgore killed kids look, in Undertale, be and Toriel divorced him. Oh sure no, I like the theory that he had an affair with Rudy more. <laughs> <laughs> I, could see I can, I can kind of see it. In Toriel's hatred yeah, of like, I could. The decision to it's, I think it's like a little bit of a stretch where, like, I don't actually think there is really any proof. The, the main problem I have is that they don't act like Des is dead. They act like Des yeah. is disappeared. Mm, yeah. Yeah, why would uh, Noelle constantly search up December on her PC? True, you're right, yeah. If, if she was dead, she's dead. It's not like you're going to find her. Mm hmm Are they saying that she killed it? Yeah. Which doesn't make sense, as from our knowledge, magic isn't really a thing in the light world. Yeah. D tier. Yeah, it's not like brain dead, but... Yeah. Eh. He might have been blamed for not finding her. Maybe. I, I understand that. Yeah, I could understand that's... that more. But it's like the yeah. word had a hand in it, too, in the yeah. word here. Has really is dead slash possessing Chris. Do I even want to look more into this one? Basically, it's the idea that Azrael is just dead and that Chris is a weird, like, three person body. Part of it being actual Chris, part of it being Azrael, and part what? of it being us. Also, <laughs> and also, like, Rouse is partially made of that dust. So it's like half headband, half dust. Is that this it's, one here? Yeah, yeah, it's that one as well. That Rousey is Asriel's uh, dead body. No, I don't think he's dead at all. Why would they be like, he's in college? Only be like, oh no, that's actually secret code for <laughs> dead. Like, no. I think, is is Asriel going to show up, like, at all until the end? Probably not, but I don't think that means he's dead. I was just saying, what's the time loop theory? Pretty simple. It's just that the one ending is that, you know, stuff... A bunch of stuff can change in the game, but the single ending is the game restarting and it's just one time loop of happening over and over and over mm -hmm. again. So it's That's kind of just like a different version of like the your choices don't matter theory in a way? Yeah, or your choices do technically matter as in, you know, stuff changes heavily. It's just that like hmm. everything gets sent back to the beginning, which is why they don't matter in the sense of, well, nothing's permanent. That might be another F, just kind of like... I I, the evidence is there of like the your choices don't matter, but then taking it to mean a time loop, like what proof of there is if a time loop? Oh, I remember you explained this one before, like the Spamton is the Undertale wrong number caller. Yeah, the evidence for it is that one, it's a uh, fun value thing, so it's mm -hmm. indirectly connected with Gaster. The caller asked for a G dot dot dot, and literally the only two characters that start with G are Gerson and Gaster. If it if they're is calling Gaster, then it does make sense for a call from Deltarune to go into Undertale 
since Gaster was split across time and space. I, I'll be, put it in there because it's like not the worst theory in the world. I just, nah, again, a little bit of a stretch for me. I mean, I see right here, Shom equals secret boss. I don't think he'll yeah. be a secret boss. Maybe a little bit fun, but I think he's just going to be a secure shopkeep in town. I don't know where to put it, though. Probably D. Memory heads refers to stealth. What's where's that one? Memory heads are a enemy. It's like one of the true labs things from Undertale, oh. I think. Why are we talking about Don't Forget Again? Um, let's just see where this is going, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> is it gonna be like, oh, they say Kimi in this song, so that means that they are now actually the ones that are singing the. <laughs> the truth, the promise in our hearts, but hear me out. I What? If these uh, things are <laughs> tied to gas. Neither of us knows what the fuck this to means. And say, don't forget, we're with you in the dark. <laughs> Dude! Wait. Song? Songs? <laughs> I can't tell if it's coincidence or intentional. No! Stop! Shut reason. up! <laughs> it's Comic Sans! Going this hard to connect, like, the dialogue, and, like, the fact that you can't connect it in, J in English, so you're forced to use Japanese and use the word Kimi to connect everything. No, this is just too much of a stretch. That's way too much of a stretch. Oh yeah, but they say this, they're in the dark, so the, the ending song of Deltrun it talks about being in the dark, and, and then they say Kimi, and then they also say Kimi in the song, so it, it, it all connects and they predicted everything. I'm like, oh my god, dude, just Jesus Christ. Uh. This is gonna sound crazy, but like, <laughs> people use words. Undertale Sands is from Deltarune. Yeah. Stuff like that, it's those, I don't think there's any there's, connection to them. There's some evidence. You want you want the evidence, I guess. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so first thing first, you know, you know when you interact with Sans first time in Delta Room, and you get the dialogue option of, "Hey, I I know you, we're friends," and Sans like, "What the hell? I never met you before." The fact that you know the Junior Jumble in uh, Delta Room, not Delta Room, uh, Undertale, Undertale. Yeah. That has icy branding, and that's the only example of icy in the entire game of Undertale. Go to Delta Rune, and I see this big thing. Noel mentions I see. There's a whole pizza restaurant about I see. So there's the idea that I see doesn't really exist in Undertale. The Junior Trouble is from the restaurant in Delta Rune. The other evidence is the fact that, you know, going back to Undertale, there's the shopkeeper who mentions that Papyrus and Sans just kind of appeared one day. They just walked into town and sat themselves a spot, which makes it seem a bit sus. I mean, that's why, okay, I moved it up to D because like, okay, I was like, the evidence, I can understand it. Um, even if it is guess, true though, why does it matter? Why do we, why do we care? I guess maybe- How does it affect supposed, anything? I guess maybe it's supposed to, you know, tie up loose ends. It's supposed to give the reason why the Sands Lab exists. Yeah, but I don't think the worlds are connected at all though, but then people are like, well, then Gaster world lives in the world lines. And I'm like, I just want to see my silly little guys beat up people and save the world. That's all I care about. This one, okay. you can give me the evidence if you want for Sans equals Darkner. Immediately, no, he exists in the light world. Why would he be a Darkner? Okay, the rules, we talked about this earlier. This one, okay, okay. I can- let, let me, Why make a character that already had your appearance even more important in a future chapter? Mm -hmm. Unless he has some greater importance. He isn't like, you know, the knight or anything, but- I think that- even if he's, like, not actually super important, I think he's just going to keep showing up somehow. Which could be important yeah. in its own way. Like, I don't think, like, he's just going to be gone. Also, rules is cool. I like rules. I like him, yeah. <laughs> Do I even want to ask about rules equals caster? So the evidence for this. Mm. One, they weirdly look similar. Like, look at the faces of rules and the caster. They weirdly look similar. <laughs> Those are the first thing that shows up. I mean, I guess I can yeah. see it a little bit, but eh. But Bro's yeah, just basic... got luscious eyelashes. Sorry, continue. I'm trying. There was like some other evidence. It's like very little, but the main thing is look. 
<laughs> the fact that the fact that rules has some sort of extreme power, you know, he tries to use in chapter two, but you know, freezes before. And I could relate to that. It's not zero. It's not like Rousey equals girl. <laughs> uh, or should I say, best theory ever. But yeah, it's F. Yeah. You can kind of assume what Chris is Deltrude and Kara mean. Chris mm. is the AU of Chara. Yeah. So I'll put that into like a nice B. Where it's like, um, I don't know if there's like any more explanation for that. But like on the surface level, I'm like, it makes sense that like as Chris technically would take Kara's place as like Azriel's sibling. Do I think that Chris is Kara? Not really. I think they're two separate people, but like, I guess Deltrude Kara is not necessarily means is Kara. Azriel slash Rolse sing and don't forget. Why is there so many theories about who sings the ending song? I don't know. This is probably the most believable one. Like, Maybe. Because you have that, because you have that like a official like, like the it. emote sticker thing, which has Rolse singing it. Yeah. So, it's probably the most believable. I'll give it a D because I I don't think figuring out who sings that is like necessary to lore or anything or I, I think it's- I think, you know, you know who I think sings it? This is gonna be like a little bit of a stretch. You know who I think sings it? Who? Laura Shigihara. Birdly is fallen down in Weird Root. I guess that's just, just- he isn't like instantly dead, but he's dying. Okay, that's more- that's more understandable. That, like, him just being gone completely- But at the same time, was Birdly gonna actually matter for the ending as a whole? It's well, Birdly. No, Birdly- Birdly was gonna save the day. He's an <laughs> epic gamer. He's gonna wave dash his way to defeating the angel. How do we exist without him? I mean, to be fair, I get the- I, Okay, I get it. One ending, why would you kill off a character then? But, like, two- Realistically, I don't think Birdly is going to come back as a major character ever again. Like, I think he had his chapter. He'll show up every so often, maybe say just a like a quirky line. But I don't think he's going to ever come back to a dark world. Like, maybe at the end, like, some people, like, will plan that maybe they'll have, like, a big thing where everybody's been in the dark world, comes in the dark world, and they fight the big bad guys together. And so that's why you need everyone to be alive. But, like, it's like, we don't know. We don't know until it happens, really. Mm -hmm. It has a value to track how many people you kill kill, as in they turn to red dust and die. Yeah. You, you have- it tracks how many people are frozen, and it has a value that tracks how many people are either violenced or killed, but not frozen. So, the game, at least code-wise, tracks frozen enemies and killed enemies differently. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not like you're going to be on the frost and like, oop de doop de doo yeah. Not dead. We really don't know, and I'm kind of interested to see what they do with Birdly and like a continuation of Snowgrave once the upcoming chapters come. So I'll put that yeah. into, I'll put that into A because it's like I kind of like that conversation topic of that theory. Oh, chess theory? That's a long one. Can you give me the the best TLDR you can? You know, in chapter one we have king, in chapter two queen, right? Yes. We the chess theory is a lot of people believe this one like a lot. It's the idea that the chapters are basically each of the main bosses are going to be in relation to a chess piece and in decreasing order of value since in chess chess pieces have points assigned to them mm -hmm. and we start with the king who doesn't technically have a point value it's infinite because you know you beat the king you win immediately regardless of what happens yeah and also on top of being directly connected their moves relate to how they act so in chess you know the king doesn't really move much mm -hmm. until the very end yeah. And in chapter one, the king just stays up in his castle and doesn't really do much. While next is the queen, which is the second most value, at nine points. And the queen is the most mobile. It can move any direction infinitely. Mm -hmm. And in chapter two, the queen, from the get-go, you meet her, and she constantly interacts with the main protag throughout the story. And then the next one, in chapter three, would be the rook. The rook worth, uh, I think, or more quickly, five points. And in chess, the rook can only move once the pawn is removed. You know, it's stuck behind there. And, well, mm -hmm. Spamton constantly mentions about Mike and not trusting him. So some people believe that in this scenario, Mike is, um, Mike's pawn is Spamton. So they think that Mike is going to be the, the chapter three? Yeah. Well, to be fair, Jevil mentions Queen. Jevil doesn't mention Spamton. Mm -hmm. So if 
So if Mike is the boss, it's going to be the main boss per pattern. I kind of like this theory. I like the idea of it. I'll put it into B. I don't necessarily think that that means that Spamton and Mike are going to be related to this at all. In terms of chapter three, it could just literally bring in like a character and their their pawn. Like, okay. And like you get rid of the pawn and then you can talk, you can fight the boss afterwards. Like it could be something simple like that. But like, I kind of like the idea of you're going through these chess pieces as represents representatives of the main bosses. I think that's a fun idea. It does get a bit more crazier the lower you go. I mean, I would specifically, imagine. Uh-huh. Specifically, next, specifically next is the bishop, which right now just people think it's the church, and hmm. the bishops work the same as a rook. Next would be chapter five, which is the knight. Which <laughs> Don't tell me. People, people think we will fight the knight in chapter five. It's not the knight isn't actually the final ball. It's just like one of the main main ones. Then in chapter six is the pawn. And people theorize that the pawn is Chris, who's figuratively the pawn of us. Not like Chris is evil. They don't believe that. Just that Chris, after mm-hmm. defeating the knight, will basically finally have enough like determination or something to separate us. And then in chapter 7, you technically run out of chess pieces, but in chess there is pawn promotion. Which if you don't know, when the pawn reaches the end of the board, oh, yeah. you promote it into any piece. So people believe that we'll technically beat the knight in chapter 5, and then Chris, after removing us, basically we save the world just barely from the roaring. Chris will bring about the roaring, becoming the knight via pro- pawn promotion. Why do I not hate that, though? It's like, I don't, I don't, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's kind of like a little bit of a fan fiction, because it's like, not really, it's, it's, Kind of just kind of doing okay. Here's like this. This is what I would would be cool to happen if we went fast. This, but it's like I don't hate it. I don't think it's necessarily a theory, but I don't hate it. I do like the idea of all the 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 chess piece stuff, though. Even if that's not the route it goes down, I still kind of like that theory by itself too. Can I contribute wow. to the thing? I want to. I want to. What What is the Chris yes. is a vessel theory? Eh, uh, it's just the idea that Chris is a vessel, aka they naturally didn't have a soul, and we're born without it that's why we can take you know their spot in their body because it was empty we didn't shove out chris's soul oh, because they didn't so have a soul ass, though. you can like see him resisting against the actions and like trying to like do his own thing. yeah it is, that's, that's like question. an f for me <laughs> it's just the question of where if chris did already have a soul where did it go but like i feel like also like the chris is a vessel theory is also like that in that means someone intentionally made Chris as a vessel. So that's like so who, like what would that mean? And I'll also put that. Oh, that's enough. That's. I can't yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I I'm glad you enjoyed chess theory though. That was a good one. I enjoyed it. What about choice between Noel and Rawls say? Uh, I don't know this one off the top of my head, but I'm assuming that like basically Noel takes the same. Sp- Spots, like battle wise as Ralph say both of them are healers maybe and both of them are the weak ones so maybe in the future you could choose between who you want on the team oh that would make sense that's what I'll say it's like I feel like Noelle is going to become super important I don't know if that's just me hoping as well because I love her um and I think that you will have to like choose between who you want in the party of those two, but I don't think it's going to be like how the theory states of like Ralse leaves or Ralse gets kicked out or like you can't have Noel at all. I think this like I would it would make sense like I feel like maybe story wise they'll do something kind of like chapter two of when you need Ralse he'll come in like like when you don't need Ralse he'll go off and do his own thing. If you don't need Noel she'll go off and do her own thing. Right, Dark World's parallel Undertale areas. Deltrade area bosses are parallel to Undertale bosses, is what this one says. Uh, uh, Toriel and King are both parental fig- uh, figures to Frisk and Lancer. They each remain nice to their child. And the Exus door, which is an unsafe mother child. Papyrus and Queen or Blue Fall. Okay, so it's just kind of- So basically, just that the bosses of Undertale's character-wise parallel the bosses of Deltarune. Which makes sense. I'll still keep it at D, because I'm like... Yeah, I'll keep it at D. It's not maybe, like immediately but, dumb. Yeah, it's not like the worst theory in the world, but I'm like, eh. They're too much of their own characters. I guess, like, being your own character doesn't mean it's not a parallel, but... We referenced this a bit before, about the Azrael made Undertale on his PC. Yeah. 
Yeah, the only real evidence for this is the fact that in chapter one you can check his PC and it does show him, you know, maybe a doodle of his hyper god death form. Yeah, no, I'm gonna put that in F, I'm sorry. It would make no sense. Deltarude is Gaster's Undertale fan fiction? This is pretty much just uh, he got bored while in the void and decided to make a fan fiction, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah. D because so... it's definitely not true, but a little bit funny. Yeah, that drove these two mad. I do think that he does have some sort of connection to the hidden bosses. Yeah, I'll give that. I'll give that a nice B. I agree with that. But I feel like it's more going to be hinted at than anything that he has to deal with the hidden bosses. I don't know what the hidden bosses are going to mean in the long run. I feel like their stories is their own thing, too, so. Yeah. And Gasper split universe into Undertale and Deltrude, so it's more more little Gasper things. I think that was from the yeah, same video was, we were just on. Yeah, from the same video. I mean, I get why a lot of people think, like, this universe was created by Gaster, like, the Deltrude universe, like, in, in everything, but it's like... For me, it's just there's not enough proof. Gaster theme battle remix. Basically, it's the idea that, so you know, you have like the, the theme when you're making your uh, vessel, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, Andrew Cunningham, if I remember correctly, believes that this theme is basically just a, a remix of Gaster theme, like a remake, mm -hmm. and it's remade for the purpose to be used in a future battle. Not necessarily against Gaster, but like a being mm -hmm. from him. See, it's theories like this where I'm like, why do you, why do they think that? Like, why do they like assume that that's what's gonna happen? I'm sorry, that's an F tier because I'm just like I don't really see where why you would think that. Like, what's the connection? Why is this Gaster versus Kara? I mean, <laughs> it probably makes sense what it's supposed to be, but the fact that it okay. just sounds like a fucking battle is about to happen. I, nobody really believes this anymore. That was like a big theory back in like pre-chapter 2. Mm -hmm. It's basically the idea that Chara and Gaster are fighting over the narrative of the story. Mm. Gaster representing your choices do matter. Chara, your choices don't matter. And this fight is not like literally as they're killing each other, but yeah. like metaphorically since the start with Chara being that second voice. Yeah. Yes, especially because you like no one believes that anymore. That'll go into F. Grand Fountain made Ralsei special. It's basically an idea about why Ralsei is so weird. And unique. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we know that Ralsei was made directly from the fountain per his uh, manual that was cut. Mm -hmm. And Ralsei is the only being that we know of that comes from that fountain. Mm -hmm. So it could so it could explain why Ralsei can you know, apparently walk into the light world. Mm -hmm. And all the other strange stuff comes yeah. from the fact that Ralsei was born of the Grand Fountain, which makes him special. I kind of like that. I'll get that an A. I kind of like that. That's a really interesting take on it. Anyways, Ice E Theory. Ice E Theory. This could mean two things. One is what I mentioned previously with Ice E about how Ice E from Delt, not Ice E from Undertale, is Ice E from Deltarune. The other idea is that Ice E is a future secret boss, or not like. <laughs> Not like literally like the character in the light world, but I mean like yeah. a dark world thing based off of Icy. Yeah. The main reason why is, like I said, Icy has a weird amount of focus in Deltarune. Specifically, Noel mm -hmm. and like these spamped and tweaked stakes mentioned about Icy Cryptid. He, she oh, yeah. <laughs> the pizza box. So some people believe that in the future dark world, we'll see the pizza box that would burnt, like the remains get, mm -hmm. you know into a dark world as a secret boss. Uh, I'll put that in D. Thinking about it from an, like a not in-game perspective, you could just be like, this mascot existed for a brief second in Undertale and he decided to just bring it back to, Del to Deltarune as like a running gag. Yeah. I don't know if there's gonna be any lore reason as to why he's more important, but. So I see this one says intros are chapter, like intro to chapters are flashbacks. Does that mean like the light world stuff is a flashback? It just says they're formatted like the Azrael flashback in Undertale. Oh, I think they're talking about like the, when the screen is all black and we're oh. being woken up. I'll give that a C, like a nice middle ground. Like it's an interesting because you're taking the formatting from Undertale to Delta Room, but I don't know. Yeah. It could end up being that, because, like, a lot of people didn't know that they were flashbacks when playing through uh, Undertale, or, like, they knew that they were flashbacks, but, like, assumed that we were part of the flashback when it was it was Kara, not Frisk. 
Next is Chris equals Frisk Deltarune. So basically, the other side of Chara, uh, Frisk, e Chris equals Chara Deltarune. It's weird because I can see both of them being true, like, simultaneously. Because, like, technically, you're playing as Chris in a way, so technically Chris is the protag, and Frisk is the protag, but, like, it makes more sense to me for Chris being, like, the Deltarune version of Kara, rather than the Deltarune version of Frisk. There's a one below below. This made found for sympathetic reasons. I kind of know about this thing. I heard mm -hmm. people talking about it. But basically, Chris is the knight, but they're not doing it to call it the roaring. They're doing it for personal reasons. It's gonna be like saying that like Chris is like opening it up so that Susie and Rolse like can still keep going on adventures, maybe? Yes. Or I guess in this theory, I guess it's specifically for, for Susie's case. It might be my ne my next S tier. I actually really like that. The idea that Chris is making these fountains, like, for their friends. If you were to have Chris revealed that early on, finding out that their intention isn't evil, it, they're not doing a good thing, but it isn't evil, and then maybe there's someone, like, an, if there's a second night, maybe they have an evil intention. Yeah, or maybe there'll be the twist of no one ever had an evil intention, but it went too far or something. Yeah. Okay, because that would also bring up the question of who was the first? Who opened the first Dark World? Because, like, thinking about it, Chris did also look a bit, I guess, off-put at first, if I remember correctly, when, like, the first thing opened. It's been too long, so I don't quite remember. So it makes sense that maybe someone was the first, and then Chris started opening up more because they realized they're getting close to Susie, they're getting friends, they want to see Ralse. Uh, yeah. I don't think the theory has anything to do with Ralse, but I'm going to act like it does. Now, kind of go with me believing that Chris is the knight, because technically Chris would be the knight, but not the only one or isn't like necessarily that doesn't mean that chris is evil i like that yeah. theory Nar Kara. i'm pretty sure that's supposed to be like is it the narrator is Kara again or something yeah um andrew cummingham did a video debunking that okay. uh basically there's too many inconsistencies for it to be uh nera chara okay. and delta rune i'll put that in a nice f yeah right i'll say debunked no well killed deaths bring up like oh it's this one again yeah i was like i wonder if they're gonna it, i think that's the same theories we we're looking at earlier where yeah. it's like so noel snow graved death mm -hmm. no yeah no nah. i don't believe it i i remember slightly hearing about the papyrus equals eggman <laughs> theory there's, it sounds like it's a fucking sand equals nest theory um there's two main pieces of evidence for it one mm -hmm. in in the piece of undertale merch it has a uh, artwork of the pirates behind the exact type of trees that the Eggman's behind. And two, in the pirates' dating menu back in Undertale, there's a section oh, that has egg. It's an egg, an yeah. Egg. That's literally like the two pieces of evidence. Rat finally realizing that we just mean the egg in Deltrude and not Eggman from Sonic. <laughs> nah, pirates. <laughs> Papyrus is Dr. Robotnik. This might be an F tier for me again. I. It wouldn't make sense. Like, why would he be that guy? Like, why? I think this has to do with the, the vessel theory we were talking about earlier. Um, I, it's, I think it more to deal with chess theory. Basically, the idea that eventually we'll fight Chris. I'll give that a C. Because Rousey has a crush on the player. Okay, this is kind of what we were looking at earlier, where it's like. Rossi yeah. doesn't have a crush on Chris, they have a crush on the player. I guess I'll put that- where did I put the other one? I'll put it like next to that one. So, Rossi has a shadow crystal. I don't know that one off the top of my head, but, you know, mm -hmm. guessing yeah. is that, well, we know that each dark world has a shadow crystal so far, mm -hmm. so logically there should be a dark uh, crystal in the uh, Grand Fountain, and they have only one suspect. Mm. I guess I'll keep with C with the other ones. All I see is Ralse is working with Gaster, and I already want to throw that into F. I saw this theory, the roaring has occurred before. Uh, and Rat apparently believes that Ralse is the survivor of a previous roaring. But it's kind of odd that Ralse is the only survivor, apparently. Also, by that logic, I mean, the prophecy has happened before, and the prophecy happened before, and there must have been a previous <laughs> Chris, Susie. And, well, they Hold themselves. on, hold on. But what if the, pro like, this one, do I believe it? I don't know. But, 
But like, what if the prophecy exists because it happens before, so now he knows how to stop it, you know? Who started the prophecy to begin with? Why were there, there a previous Chris and Susie? Since they know our names... Well, Chris and Susie think... aren't part of the prophecy. I don't know how he knows their names. Again, there's still a lot about Rossi that is pretty suspicious, and I admit that. But our names aren't in the prophecy, specifically. Yeah. You also have the fact that the town is named after us, the Pierre Chris's town. It's Kamoka Town. Yeah. It just... How does Ralsei know all about this stuff but, separately? Do we really know that Ralsei named the town, though? I don't think that's ever said that Ralsei named the town. Yeah, well, I don't think Chris did, since we never see Chris but then who, in the... I don't think... I don't, there's no hint on who named the town right now. Yeah. But then somebody must know of our existence, since we didn't put the mm -hmm. name there. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of suspicious, but I don't think Ralsei's working with Gaster. That sounds stupid as fuck to me. Okay. And again, okay. it's because I'm, I'm a Gaster hater! That's it! <laughs> uh, just because we were talking about this before, Roaring has occurred before. I'll give that a C. Not because I, I don't know if I believe it or not, but it wouldn't make sense to how the prophecy exists because it happens before. I don't know about the Ralsei is a survivor thing. I know Rat yeah. has a video on it that well, they're saying they believe. Again, I could be so wrong. Like, I'm the one, like, putting all my opinions on full blast here. This could come and bite me in the ass later and be like, <laughs> wow, you were wrong as fuck. Like, are you stupid how wrong you were? So... <laughs> and this tier list does not have ice house theory. So zero out of ten. <laughs> So these ones I'm still like a little bit confused about, like the Ralsei's, okay. Chris Ideo, Chris Trusel. Okay, so for the ideal self, that one's actually pretty easy. It's just mm. the idea that if you believe that the red hit headband is Ralsei, mm -hmm. it's the idea that Chris, since you know being adopted, always had like a kind of like a body dysmorphia, you know, <laughs> being raised, by, yeah. being raised by goats and you know wearing your horns, thinking they'll grow and being. Having self-image issues. Mm -hmm. So Rousey is basically just the ideal Chris self of if he was truly a goat monster like Wait, his that's mother. Kinda, that's kind of cute, but sad. I'll put that next to the Red Horns one right up there. Yeah. So it's just Rousey being based off the Red Horns is Chris's ideal self confirming with his uh, issues with body. Mm -hmm. For Chris's true soul, my best guess is, you know, the idea of if, you know, Chris was probably born with a soul that wasn't ours, since obviously mm -hmm. we weren't there since the beginning. And, you know, Chris throws it out. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't do that if it was originally their soul. It's mm -hmm. completely foreign. So the obvious idea is, where the heck is Chris's soul? And the idea is, I guess, Rousey took on Chris's soul. That also would explain why Rousey can, you know, walk around in a light world, apparently. Mm -hmm. Because they're technically a lightener kind of or half naff i don't know about that one i like this one more the, the ideal self more than i like the true soul thing probably d for that one uh all right susie is half is from human community and susie is half human so it's a susie yeah this one just says susie's human community making them an outsider similar to how chris is short one it's a comic dub <laughs> i think we literally talked about that before how this one's probably a comic dub for proof <laughs> Oh my okay, god. Okay, do we really want to watch this? I feel like human community makes more than a ha makes sense than like a half human. Um, okay, Susie resists player. I don't know those YouTubers, but it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. You know, mm -hmm. in the times where- In the times where we like control quote-unquote Susie, like on the Ferris wheel, we're given options, but Susie completely ignores us. Yeah. And the, and the scene in the jail where you can choose Chris, not Chris, Susie is like, did I hear something? Mm -hmm. so we choose the option and ignores us. Yeah. So the idea that Susie is like more determined than Chris is able to just wave us off. Mm -hmm. Or it might be relation to distance, aka, okay, you know, our soul is right in Chris, so we can directly control them. Yeah. While Susie is distant, so our control is weaker. I don't think it's really that Susie resists control, it's that we literally cannot control her. her. We're not her soul. I think it's like, for me how it always came off is like, 
we want to say these options, but, like, as if we were controlling her, but, like, she says her own things, we're not controlling her at all. It's not that she's not resisting, yeah. it's that we literally don't have control. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it into D, just because, like, it's just the word resist there makes it seem like she has to actively, like, resist control. Uh, for this one, I have literally zero idea. All right. You're here for the universal mother theory. Is it something about how, like, the queen is a universal mother? So is it, like, a theory that says that, like, the queen is, like, a universal mother figure to all of them? Is that the theory here? Queen doesn't really think she is the mother to all these people. Mm -hmm. But the characters react to Queen, like, to how they think of their mother. Okay, how do we think about the universal MILF theory? I'll put that in a nice B. Interesting theory. It's just Ralsei called theory. Ralsei theory, whatever that entails. Ralsei is evil, 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 evil. Um, oh shit, he is evil, goddamn! No! <laughs> Did you see that picture? He had a gun! Phoenix right! Phoenix right! Edgeworth! 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 Mm -hmm. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know them? There's like this video where it's like, <laughs> every time like, something you like comes up and like, I don't know. I see Ace Attorney in my brain just is like, ah! So it's, it's, it's listening to all the stuff we know about why Rosse is suspicious. The T theory. Oh yeah, the T theory about how Chris kind of doesn't really care much. Yeah. I love when a theorist is like, yeah, this is flavor text, it's not significant. Like, thank you. Chris is the first Sona. This person gets me. They also disagree with the, 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 the this theory, the Rosse is Azrael. Oh, they're, okay, so their theory is that Rosse is the embodiment of hometown. Okay, let's, let's, let's hear them talk. I want to put this one on B. Not because I necessarily agree with it, just because I think it's an interesting theory. Rosse is Monster House. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your, what are your thoughts, like, oh, overall God. first? Delta and fans are fucking insane. Um, I think it's the best way to put this experience tonight. Like, there was a lot more agreeable than I, like, would have expected. Or, like, ones that are like, yeah, ones that I'm like, okay, I can see that, and ones that are like... I don't see it, but I like it. There's a lot more I expect. Like, I expected to dislike a lot more. So, like, I'm kind of happy that they were not all just horrible.